We have seen before that it is by knowing the truth of your being that you are set free from the conditioned state in which you are struggling for survival instead of thriving like the gods that you came here to be. Knowing the truth is another term for gaining understanding. The key to self-transformation is the faith or conviction that comes through the evidence of understanding and experience. Let us now examine how your conditioning came about so that we can be better prepared to transcend it into the glorious new self that awaits. The first level of conditioning is pre-genetic selection. Consciousness is the reality of human life. Bodies are born and bodies die, but the soul or consciousness that makes up a person lives forever. Just as in science we say that energy is never created or destroyed, in metaphysics we say that consciousness is never created or destroyed. Consciousness exists beyond space and time. That is, it is eternal. The individualized expression of each human being adds to the collective consciousness of humanity. This collective consciousness of humanity is a sea of consciousness out of which your individuality emerges. Your individuality, your soul, is the result of this collective consciousness funneling itself down from the totality through your cultural and ancestral lineage and down through your parents. You can visualize this funneling as a progressive narrowing down from the universal consciousness through your racial consciousness through your cultural and religious consciousness, through your tribal consciousness, through your ancestral consciousness, through your family consciousness, and down to your individual consciousness. You emerge as an individual soul in the universe through the funneling of the universal soul. The second level of conditioning is genetic selection. Your body emerged out of a microscopic dot called a zygote that was formed when your father's sperm fertilized your mother's egg. This zygote was lodged in your mother's womb where through the miracle of life it grew into this amazing body you now carry. It is a great wonder that this dot contained within itself all the information it needed to generate organize and orchestrate this complex system you carry around as your body. That information is called the genetic code or your DNA. If you look backward, you will be able to trace your genetic lineage from yourself through your parents, their own parents and parents' parents, down thousands and millions of ancestral lines till you arrive at the first to humans who lived on earth. In other words, humanity is just one big family. Every individual is from the same gene pool of humanity. What makes you a unique individual is a unique sequence of your DNA, which is a result of infinite numbers of permutations and combinations that occurred at every level of your lineage as a universal gene pool was being narrowed down to arrive at you. The third level of conditioning is epigenetic control. When you were growing as a fetus in your mother's womb, you depended on your mother for everything you needed. But it is not just food and oxygen that your mother transferred to you through your umbilical cord. As the experiences, all the experiences that your mother went through generated feelings in her heart which she communicated with you. All the joys and sorrows, fears and ambitions, beauty and ugliness that surrounded her were channeled down to you. The hormones that her body produced in response to happiness and stress were mixed in the blood that she pumped through your system. The energy field that your mother's body generated in response to her diet, exercise, relationships, work, environment, and so on, became the energy field in which you were formed. Overall, your mother created the physiological, environmental, mental, 
and energetic environment that orchestrated your gene expression to form the person that you have become. The fourth level of conditioning is astrological priming. From time immemorial, the mystics and scientists alike have known that there is a relationship between life on earth and the constellations in the heavens. The earth is in itself a living system whose behavior is greatly influenced by the life cycle, the movement, and the alignment of the stars. Because every child is born under a specific astrological signature, it is believed that this astrological signature has an influence in priming or predisposing you to certain character traits. I use the word predispose so as to guard against the superstitious belief that our destinies are determined by the stars. There is no power outside of us that can determine our destiny without our permission. These forces predispose us to certain character traits and collectively shape our individuality. Our individuality becomes our destiny only when we refuse to wake up. The fifth level of conditioning is parenting. During the first seven years of life, a child's mind is in a hypnotic state. Because a child has no ego and is not yet self-aware, the environment around him has direct access to his subconscious mind. As a result, children learn by mirroring their environment rather than by thinking. This is why the first seven years of a child's life are the most crucial in defining who that child will become. What the child experiences at home and in the immediate environment automatically gets programmed in his subconscious mind as reality. Because children basically download their environment into their subconscious mind, your kids can learn four languages, four musical instruments, technology, and everything around them all at the same time. This capacity for genius in infancy is also the same capacity by which children get negatively programmed when they are surrounded by negativity and hostility. The sixth level of conditioning is culture. After the age of eight, you become a child of the world. You now possess a sense of self-awareness, I amness, or ego. Society takes over the conditioning process using the vehicles of peer influence, education, religion, media, political propaganda, economic stereotypes, tradition, and social trends. These all contribute in shaping the content of your subconscious beliefs or paradigms. Your subconscious beliefs or paradigms become the fountain out of which your feelings flow spontaneously. Your feelings inspire your thoughts. Your thought patterns change your brain through the process of neuroplasticity. Your brain engineers your physiology through the process of neurochemistry. Your physiology aids your gene expression through the process of epigenetics. Your gene expression orchestrates your behavior. Your behavior patterns or habits constitute your personality. And finally, your personality becomes, becomes the cause of your personal reality or experiences. The seventh level of conditioning is auto-suggestion. The pattern of feeling, thinking, being, and doing the same things over and over is called auto-suggestion, and it is dictated by your subconscious mind. The 20th century psychologist used to assume that auto-suggestion was simply the act of self-suggestion using verbal affirmations. But it is not so. Every pattern of feeling, thinking, speaking, and acting has a feedback effect on you by reinforcing the existing program. 
Every habit is therefore an auto-suggestion, be it a feeling, a thought, a word, or an action. By the time we are 35 years old, our personality is almost entirely set. We think an average of 70,000 thoughts a day, and 95% of these thoughts are the habitual expressions of the content of our subconscious mind. As you can see, any attempt to improve your life, any attempt to succeed, any attempt to find happiness is doomed to fail if you are operating from this old conditioned self. You can change your reality only if you change who you are. I am Godfrey Esso. Thank you for following this episode of Raptures of Inspiration.